family for Movie Review Relay. And we're here today to talk about Scandal. I hope you were watching. I'll give you all the important information, everything you need to know. So Liv and Robin, they retrieved the president's daughter from this wild party that she had. She's 500 miles away at the boarding school. Daughter becomes involved with two young men at this party who have sex with her and they filmed the whole thing. So now there's a sex tape with the president's daughter. So they call Liv in. Liv and Robin go in a helicopter to pick up the daughter and bring her back to Washington. And I mean, they have to escort her literally out of the building. She's so high and out of it, you know, whatever she's been doing. You know, you hate to, to even think about it. Okay, so when they get back to the White House, um, Liv alerts Cyrus, who's in bed with her, his boy toy, you know, Michael, the same guy from last week. And Liv says, give me the present, give it to me now. This is the worst sex movie I've ever seen. Now, Liv has seen a lot of stuff in her life. I don't think it's really the worst one, but I understand why she would be urgent about it because, you know, he needs to see about his daughter. When Karen is safe in the White House, the president scolds his daughter. And his daughter Karen lets her father know that she was very well aware of what she was doing, promiscuity and all. She says it wasn't a rape. The president warns Liv to find the young man responsible for these sex tapes because he doesn't want these things distributed all over the internet. In another scene, Cyrus accuses Abby of a, trying to be an Olivia Pope wannabe. I guess Abby feels some kind of way. Abby's, you know, very upset. Of course, she's a little jealous of Liv. I guess most people are. Uh, Liv's social status, her economic status, and the status she has to the president. Now, initially, the president keeps the incident with the daughter and the sex tape away from Millie because he knows Millie's vulnerable. You know, this is a good thing. He's trying to really uh, prevent her from going back into a tailspin. You know, he just got her out of this uh, slump that she was in when she used to go out over to the graveyard and sit at the graveyard all day. So he just got her out of that. This scene then switches to Roland, to Papa Pope, and Papa Pope is scolding Tom his quote unquote favorite because Tom didn't kill Jake. No sooner than Roland leaves, here comes Jake to tell Tom, don't try it, you know? And then Jake says, don't try it. You know, I could have had you killed. You know, you tried to kill me, but I could have had you killed. So he's saying, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll work together. We'll get these tapes, the, this information, this file from uh, Rosen, Attorney Rosen. And this is, this is a very important file that could throw the whole country into a tailspin and bring down the entire government. He says, we'll get these tapes and they won't bother either one of us. We'll both be safe. We then see the president and live alone. He looks at her tearfully and he says, where have you been? Where did you go? And it's very, very, um, it's heartwarming. I think it's a very tender scene, but we all know it's very, still very illicit. It's still illicit because, you know, it's still the same old thing. He's a married man. He says to her, you are my entire world. <gasps> I mean, it's just so romantic. <laughs> I just have to say that's very good. All right, but uh, they embrace, you know, when they kiss. But then that's very temporary because when he finds out when she did go away, she went away with Jake. Of course, he's not happy with that. You know, he doesn't want uh, his quote unquote girlfriend, you know, his uh, mistress to be with another man, regardless of the fact that he's married. That's how men are. That's just the way it is. Everybody knows that, okay? He's hurt. He's very hurt that she went away with Jake. Melly, the president's wife, spots Olivia. Melly, the president's wife, spots Olivia leaving the president's office and she goes berserk. Okay? So Melly goes berserk. She's yelling out in the corridor, What are you doing in my house? Olivia! You know, it's really an awful scene. You got to see it. You got to see it. All right. So, anyway, so uh, Olivia says, You know, you just got to talk to your husband. I'm not going to say anything to you. And we, we know what it was about. It was about the little girl, Cameron, who was caught, you know, with this, with the, uh, at the party and the sex tapes in there. But she, Melly doesn't know. They're keeping that from her right now, so she doesn't know. All right, so finally Melly goes and she confronts the president about having Olivia back. Didn't I tell you when Olivia comes back to tell me? Because she, you know, had this conversation with him already. And uh, there's some nasty dialogue exchange. One of the things that's exchanged is the president finally tells his wife about what went on with the daughter with the sex tapes and everything like that. And then he challenges her as a mother. And then Melly comes, she throws the knives back at him because he says, he, he says to her, I really need Olivia to handle things in so many words, you know, because you, um, you know, you were drunk sometimes. You were running around smelly and stinky. I mean, he really says some awful things to her. He calls her smelly Melly. 
you know, really very insulting things, very hurtful things, I should say, which husband and wife say to each other all the time. So I, I can't see why they can't forgive each other and go, go move on. But it's okay. I'm just saying these are things that, you know, do happen within a marriage. You do hear these awful things exchanged between a uh, husband and wife at times, especially under such stressful conditions. So anyway, uh, Melly shoots back at him. Uh, well, you know, the, the president says to her, uh, you know, she was in a sex tape or whatever. And, you know, she's having sex with these boys. She's promiscuous and all these things. And Melly shoots back. Well, she's just like her father. You know, and that was a stab at him, of course, because he's been in so much. Uh, uh, he's had such an appetite. Liv and her associates, Robin, uh, locate the boy's parents, the boy who has the sex tapes, because they now want to get these tapes before they are distributed all over the internet. So she contacts this boy's parents, the Morgans, you know, after they, you know, find out who it is. And the Morgans meet with Olivia to try to, you know, control the situation. Liv does not realize that they are very smart, uh, with regard, very astute with regard to how valuable this tape is, the parents, who are the Morgans, decide it's time to blackmail or at least try to extort some money. You know, this is a very uh, compromising tape. So they ask Livia for $2.5 million from the president and they'll destroy the tape. Otherwise, you know, that's, that's their price. That's their price. And so Livia is very upset, but, you know, she talks to the president and, of course, they agree, agree to it because he doesn't want his daughter to, you know, have this tape... Uh, out, you know, that it's going to ruin their lives. Now, all of us know who know about sex tapes now, it really doesn't ruin lives anymore. I guess it would have years ago. It probably wouldn't, but I understand that's your daughter. You don't want your daughter out there like that. Olivia arranges a meeting with the Morgans, you know, to give them the $2.5 million and get access to all of these uh, internet tapes. And in doing so, the Morgans start to insult the daughter, calling her a slut. She's a whore. And this enrages Olivia, who now spins this whole thing very differently. She says, well, what I'm going to say now, the deal is off. I'm taking a picture of everything you, taking a picture of the contract to check. And I'm going to say you try to extort the president. It would be considered pornographic because of the children's age. And she spins the whole thing around so that the Morgans now look like the bad guy, which they were the bad guy. They were shady to begin with, but now they're at a different level because, uh, you know, Porn is against the law. You know, it's a whole, that's a whole nother ball game. So Liz did what she was supposed to do, which is handle these awful situations, spin them another way. She did exactly what she's hired to do. Melly then gets a tender moment with her daughter, Karen. And she says to Karen, you know, don't worry about what happened. She really shows some great mothering skills. She says, if you were a guy, you would be high five for having sex with all of these partners. <laughs> but you know, this is how women are. This is in our society. We can't have this appetite like the men have because people scrutinize us. And that's just the way it is. The scene switches to Jake. Okay. Cause Jake's got this tape from uh, attorney Rosen and, uh, it's not a tape actually. It's a uh, file. The father can bring down the government and it's the father. He wants to use his leverage so that Roland won't kill him, you know? <laughs> and, uh, the one he tried to get time to go in with them, but Tom was questioned by some of the president's people and Roland walks in the room while Tom is being questioned. And then Tom is so deathly and terrified of Roland, you know, that he will agree to just about anything, you know, and therefore it looks like he's not going to go in with Jake on this, this, um, scheme or idea to protect himself and leverage his, uh, safety with, the file, this uh, important file. Well, then it's Jake's turn and you see Jake coming in. Jake is walking in with a suit uh, among some other suits and they're all walking toward the conference room. This is going to be the big confrontation, right? This is going to, he's going to leverage himself with these tapes. And then we got to wait till next week <laughs> to see how that, to how that ends up because that's where it ends. But it's this great scene of all of these men marching in their suits, almost marching to battle, you know? So the last scene is actually Tom being led away in handcuffs. All right, that's Tom. But now it's Jake's turn. I guess next week we'll see what happens with Jake. You gotta watch, it's gonna be good. Okay, thank you for joining me for our review of Scandal. It's Renee Stanley 
for Movie Review Relay. God bless.